Day. This is Commander Rick calling Earth for being you surface dwellers and prisoners of gravity. Greetings, prisoners of gravity. This is Commander Rick on board Reality One in orbit. I'm interrupting your signal to start talking about science fiction and comic books. I've been picking up some of the 4,000 signals that have been bouncing through the satellite. I've been tuning in and out, listening, and I'm starting to pick up a trend. It began in 1989 with Batman. People suddenly realized that science fiction and comic books were maturing art forms. Or maybe they just realized science fiction and comic books could make them a lot of money but everybody suddenly become interested. All of a sudden, science fiction books are being turned into movies. Science fiction books are being turned into comics. Movies are being turned into comics. Classic pieces of literature are being turned into comics. Comics are being turned into graphic novels. Graphic novels are producing lines of toys. Lines of toys are appearing on T-shirts, and then T-shirts are being turned into TV programs, even illegal broadcasts in outer space. We've got to start talking about all these transformations. If Sherlock Holmes is the most famous detective in the world, then America's most famous detective is Dick Tracy. God, Holmes, how did you know? Elementary, my dear Watson, I merely read Bill Crouch's book, America's Most Famous Detective. This book details the life of cartoonist Chester Gold, the evolution of Dick Tracy from detective to science fiction hero, and then back to detective. It gives a history of each weird-faced villain and follows Chester Gold's retirement and the arrival of the new creative team of Collins and Locker. A Chicago Tribune syndicate who are now called Tribune Media Services. We're aware of my writing. Several of my novels have been published. And it really was my, uh, my mystery fiction that got attention called to me. Because this character, John, who's in Spree, who's in these Nolan stories, is a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. And that was what attracted them to me. They said, wait a minute, this is mystery writer in, in Iowa that has writes about comics. He has this character who's a cartoonist. Maybe he could write Dick Tracy. And that's really literally how it happened. Well, Tracy can't grow. I tried to, frankly, revert him. I tried to make him less of a symbol, less of a law and order symbol, and more of a man so that in an upcoming storyline, he'll become a grandfather. Uh, Sparkle Plenty is going to have a child, and Sparkle is married to Junior Tracy, he's Tracy's adopted son. So we're going to have Tracy as a proud grandparent. I think when you have an icon like Tracy, that's the danger, that he's a symbol, he's not a character. You know, that outrageous profile. I have tried to bring a certain amount of humanity back. But basically, I'm just trying to do uh, what Gould did, filtered through my own sensibilities and through the modern age. I mean, I, I am going to deal with modern crimes, whereas maybe he dealt with, well, what was modern then? He dealt with Al Capone, so I'm going to deal with, uh, you know, computer crime, let's say. And that keeps Tracy on the cutting edge. As well as the daily cartoon strip, Dick Tracy is going to star in a prestige format series from Disney Comics. The three-issue series is timed to coincide with the Dick Tracy movie, due out on June 15, 1990. After the mega success of the Batman movie, everyone involved in the Dick Tracy film from Warren Beatty on down is hoping that it does as well at the box office, or even half as well. There's a new hero on the horizon for 1990, and he's determined to stop the biggest and meanest group of menacing mobsters ever to hit the big screen. Warren Beatty stars as Dick Tracy, the most popular crime stopper of all time in Walt Disney Pictures, Dick Tracy. Here's a special preview of this summer movie event. Let's go! Next summer, Big Boy Caprice, <laughs> Breathless Mahoney, Flat Top, The DA, Prune Face, Mumbles, Lips Manless, and The Blank are out to get the greatest detective of all time. I'm rubbing him out. I want him dead! Nobody touches Tracy but me. Tracy, Tracy. Tracy? You mind if I call you Dick? I was beginning to wonder what a girl had to do to get arrested. Wearing that dress is a step in the right direction. For a tough guy, you do a lot of pansy things. Tracy battles move! Everywhere I turn! Oh! 
You're under arrest. Aren't you gonna frisk me? Hey, copper, maybe you ought to look before you leap. When it's time to fight crime, he's your man. Walt Disney Pictures presents Warren Beatty as Dick Tracy. Whose side are you on? And Madonna as Breathless Mahoney. Are you gonna make a move? Do I have to do everything? I'm on duty. Dick Tracy, coming next summer to a theater near you. I'm on my way. The film looks like it's pretty tongue-in-cheek. Warren Beatty's tongue in Madonna's pretty cheek. But it also looks like it's faithful to Chester Gold's philosophy that comics are entertainment for the masses. And if you're into a detective story on a universal scale, check out this non-fiction title, The Fifth Essence by Lawrence Krauss. Larry is a Canadian physicist who works in the USA now, and he's involved in the search for dark matter in the universe. You see, for our present theories of creation to work, the universe has to be an awful lot heavier than it appears to be. As British mathematician Stephen Hawking notes on the back cover of the book, either we fail to see 99% of the universe, or we are wrong about how the universe began. If you have a little bit of scientific knowledge, this is a really well-written book about a very hot, hot topic. Well, okay, it's not a hot topic, because if the matter that we can't see were hot, then it would glow and give off light, and then we could see it, and it wouldn't be invisible. Never mind. Read the book. Dick Tracy is by no means the only comic book hero moving to the silver screen for 1990. Jim Henson is bringing to life the Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles. Or is it Mutant Ninja to Anyway, they're mean, they're green, and they're on the screen. Our family grows. The city itself will be our playground to use as we please. Rewarding ourselves and punishing our enemies. We've been looking for you, Miss O'Neill. There is a new enemy, freaks of nature. Together, we will punish these creatures. What the heck was that? Looked like sort of a big turtle in a trench coat. The Ninja Turtles were one of the comic success stories in the 1980, created by Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman as a spoof of Jack Kirby comics, Frank Miller's Ronin, and Bruce Lee Kung Fu films. Peter and Kevin started small, self-publishing 3,000 copies of the first issue and selling them at their table at comic conventions. And then it began, word of mouth, hey, have you seen this? Started to build. The first issue was reprinted and distributed in comic stores, and then suddenly they reached the point by which any artistic endeavor is truly measured to be a success. People began to copy and imitate them and rip off the idea. Along the way, these heroes on the half shell have been marketed as toys, an animated cartoon series, all sorts of collectibles, and a computer game. What's next, Ninja Turtle Soup? One of the most unusual aspects of the success of the Ninja Turtles is that the people who created it hung on to the rights to it. They own it. 